When on high the heaven had not been named, from ground below had not been called by name, when primordial Apsu then begat her, and Mumu Tiamat, she who bore them all, then waters mingled as a single body, no reed hut had sprung forth, no marshland had appeared, none of the gods had been brought into being, and none bore a name, and no destinies determined. Then it was that the gods were formed in the midst of heaven, Lamu and Lahamu were brought forth, by name they were called. Before they had grown in age and stature, Anshu and Kishan were formed, surpassing the others. Long were the days, then they came forth. Anu was the heir of his father's the rival. Yes, Anshu's firstborn, Anu, was his equal. Anu begot in his image Nudimud. This Nudimud was of his father's the master of broad wisdom, understanding, mighty in strength, mightier by far than his grandfather Anshar. He had no rival among the gods, his brothers. Thus were established and war the great gods. They disturbed Tiamat as they surged back and forth. Yes, they troubled the mood of Tiamat by their hilarity in the abode of heaven. Apsu could not lessen their clamor, and Tiamat was speechless at their ways. Their doings were loathsome unto, their way was evil, they were overbearing. Then Apsu, the begetter of the great gods, cried out, addressing Mumu, his minister, O Mumu, my vizier, who rejoices my spirit, come here and let us go to Tiamat. They went and sat down before Tiamat, exchanging counsel about the gods, their firstborn. Apsu, opening his mouth, said to resplendent Tiamat, their ways are truly loathsome to me. By day I find no relief, nor repose by night. I will destroy, I will wreck their ways, that quiet may be restored. Let us have rest. As soon as Tiamat heard this, she was furious and called out to her husband. She cried out aggrieved as she raged out alone. She uttered a curse, and unto Absu she spoke. What? Shall we destroy that which we have built? Their ways indeed are most troublesome. But let us act kindly. Then Mumu answered, giving counsel to Apsu. Ill wishing and ungracious was Mumu's advice. Do destroy, my father, the mutinous ways. Then you will have relief by day and rest by night. When Apsu heard this, his face grew radiant because of the evil he planned against the gods, his sons. As for Mumu, he embraced him by the neck, as that one sat down on his knees to kiss him. Now whatever they had plotted between them was repeated unto the gods, their firstborn. When the gods heard this, they were astir, then lapsed into silence and remained speechless. Surpassing in wisdom, accomplished, rejoiceful, Ea, the all-wise, saw through their scheme. A master designed against it, he devised and set up, made artful his spell against it, surpassing and holy. He recited it and made it subsist in the deep, as he poured sleep upon him. Sound asleep he lay, when he made Absu prone, drenched with sleep. Mumu, the advisor, was powerless to stir. He loosened his band, tore off his tiara, removed his halo, and put it on himself. Having fettered Absu, he slew him. Mumu he bound and left behind Locke. Having thus established his dwelling upon Apsu, he laid hold of Mumu, holding him by the nose rope. After a year had vanquished and trodden down his foes, had secured his triumph over his enemies, in his sacred chamber in profound peace had rested, he named it Apsu, for shrines he assigned it. In that same place his called hut he founded, Yia and Dam Damkina, his wife, dwelt there in splendor. In the chamber of fates, the abode of destinies, a god was engendered, most able and wisest of gods. In the heart of Apsu was Mondo created. In the heart of holy Apsu was Mondo created. He who begot him was Ia, his father. She who bore him was Damkina, his mother. The breast of goddesses he did suck. The nurse that nursed him filled him with awesomeness. Alluring was his figure, sparkling the lift of his eyes. Lurely was his gait, commanding from of old. When Ia saw him, the father who begot him, 
He exulted and glowed, his heart filled with gladness. He rendered him perfect, and endowed him with a double godhead. Greatly exalted was he above them, exceeding throughout. Perfect were his members beyond comprehension. Unsuited for understanding, difficult to perceive. Full were his eyes, full were his ears. When he moved his lips, fire blazed forth. Large were all four hearing organs. And the eyes, in like number, scanned all things. He was the loftiest of the gods, surpassing was his stature. His members were enormous, he was exceedingly tall. My little son, my little son, my son, the son, son of the heavens, clouds of the halo of ten gods, he was strong to the utmost, as the awesome flashes were heaped upon him. Anu brought forth and begot the fourfold wind, consigning to his power the leader of the host. He fashioned, stationed the whirlwind, he produced streams to disturb Tiamat, the gods giving no rest, suffering the storm, their horns having plotted evil. To Tiamat, their mother, said, When they slew Afsu, your consort, you did not aid him but remained still. When you created the dreadful for wind, your vitals were diluted, and so we can have no rest. Let Afsu, your consort, be in your mind, and Mumu, who has been vanquished, you are left alone. You pace about distraught, without cease, you do not love us, our eyes are pinched. Without cease, let us have rest, to battle, avenge them, and render them as the wind. When Tiamat heard these words, she was pleased. You have given, let us make monsters, and the gods in the midst. Let us do battle and against the gods. They banded themselves together and marched at the side of Tiamat. Enraged, they plow without cease, day and night. They are set for combat, growling, raging. They form a council to prepare for the fight. Mother Huber, she who fashions all things, adding matchless weapons, born monster serpents, sharp of tooth, and spearing of fan. With venom for blood, she has filled their bodies. Roaring dragons, she has clothed with terror. She has crowned them with halos making them like gods. Whoever beheld them, terror overcame him. And that, when their bodies reared up, now might turn them back. She set up the viper, the dragon, and the monster Lahavu, the great lion, the mad dog, and the scorpion man, mighty lion demons, the dragonfly, the centaur, bearing weapons that do not spare, fearless in battle. Her decrees were firm, they were beyond resisting. Altogether, eleven of this kind she brought forth, from among the gods, her firstborn, who formed her assembly. She elevated Kingu, made him chief among them, the leading of the ranks, command of the assembly, the raising of weapons for the encounter, the advancing to combat, to direct the battle, to control the fight. These she entrusted to his hand, as she seated him in the council. I have cast from you the spell, exalting you in the assembly of the gods. To counsel all the gods, I have given you full power. Truly, you are supreme, you are my only consort. Your utterance shall prevail over all the Anunnaki. She gave him the tablet of destinies, fashioned on his breast. As for you, your command shall be unchangeable, your word, your word shall endure. As soon as King Gu was elevated, possessed of the rank of Anu, they decree the fate of the gods, his sons. Your one shall make the first subside, shall humble the power weapon, so potent in its sweep. When Tiamat had thus lent import to her handiwork, she prepared for battle against the gods, her offspring. To avenge Absu, Tiamat planned evil. That she was going for battle was divulged to Ia. As soon as Ia heard of this matter, he lapsed into dark silence and sat still. The days went by, and his anger subsided. He went to Anshar, his forefather. When he came before his grandfather, Anshar, he repeated all that Tiamat had plotted to him. My father, Tiamat, she who bore us, detests us. She has set up the assembly and is furious with rage. All the gods have rallied to her. Even those whom you brought forth march at her side. 
They dawn and march at the side of Tiamat. Enraged, they plow without cease, day and night. They are set for combat, growling, raging. They have formed a council to prepare for the fight. Mother Huber, she who fashions all things, has added matchless weapons, has borne monster serpents, sharp of tooth and sparing of fang. With venom for blood, she has filled their bodies. Rearing dragons, she has clothed with terror, has crowned them with halos, making them like gods, so that she, he who beholds them is overcome by terror. Their bodies rear up, and none can withstand their attack. She has set up the viper, the dragon, and the sphinx, the great lion, the mad dog, and the scorpion man, mighty lion demons, the dragonfly, the centaur, bearing weapons that spare not, fearless in battle. Her decrees are firm, they are beyond resisting. Altogether, eleven of this kind she has brought forth. From among the gods, her firstborn, who formed her assembly, she has elevated Kingu, has made him chief among them, the leading of the ranks, command of the assembly, the raising of weapons for the encounter, advancing to combat, to direct the battle, to control the fight. She entrusted these to his hands as she seated him in the council. I have cast a spell for you, exalting you in the assembly of the gods. To counsel all the gods, I have given you full power. Truly, you are supreme. You are my only consort. Your utterance shall prevail over all the Anunnaki. She has given him the tablet of destinies, fastened on his breast. As for you, your command shall be unchangeable. Your wounds shall endure. As soon as Kingu was elevated, possessed of the rank of Anu, they decree the fate for the gods, her sons. Your wound shall make the fire subside, shall humble the power weapon, so potent in its sweep. When Anshan heard that Tiamat was sorely troubled, he struck his loins and bit his lips. His heart was gloomy, his mood restless. He covered his mouth to stifle his outcry. Battle. You. Lo, you kill Mumu and Absu. Now kill Kingu, who marches before her. Wisdom. Nudimud, the of the gods. He addressed a word to Anu, his son. Mighty hero, whose strength is outstanding. His onslaught cannot be withstood. Go and stand before Tiamat, that her mood be calmed, that her heart may be merciful. If she will not listen to your word, then tell her our word, that she might be calmed. When she, he had heard the command of his father, Anshan, he made straight for her way, following the road to her. But when Anu was near enough to see the plan of Tiamat, he was not able to face her, and he turned back. He came up gently to his father, Anshan. He addressed him, My hand suffices not for me to subdue you. Anshan was speechless as he stared at the ground, hair on edge, shaking his head at Ia. All the Anunnaki gathered at that place, their lips closed tight, they sat in silence. No god, they thought, can go to battle and, facing Tiamat, escape with his life. Anshar, he said to, an avenger, the hero, in his place of seclusion, he spoke to him, your father, for you are my son who comforts his heart when facing Anshar, approach as though in combat. Stand up as you speak, seeing you, he will grow restful. The Lord rejoiced at the word of his father. He approached and stood before Anshar. When Anshar saw him, his heart filled with joy. He kissed his lips, and his fear departed from him. Anshar, be not muted, open wide thy lips. I will go and attain thy heart's desire. Anshar, be not muted, open wide your lips. I will go and attain your heart's desire. What male is it who has pressed this fight against you? Tiamat, a woman, flies at you with weapons. Be glad and rejoice. You will soon tread upon the neck of Tiamat. Be glad and rejoice. You shall soon tread upon the neck of Tiamat. 
My son, you who knows all wisdom, come to your mat with your holy spell. On the storm chariot, proceed with all speed, for your blood shall not be spilled, you will return again. The Lord rejoiced at the word of his father. His heart exalted him. He said to his father, Creator of the gods, destiny of the great gods, if I indeed, as your avenger, conquer Tiamat and give you life, set up the assembly, proclaim my destiny to be supreme. When jointly in Ubshukina you have sat down rejoicing, let my one instead of you determine their fates. What I may bring into being shall be unalterable. The command of my lips shall be neither recalled nor changed. Anshar opened his mouth and addressed a word to Gaga, his minister. O Gaga, my vizier, who gladdens my spirit, I will dispatch you to Lamu and Lahamu. You are adept. Produce you before me. Let all the gods, let them hold converse, sit down to a banquet, let them eat bread, let them mix wine. For Marduk, their avenger, let them fix their decrees. Be on your way, Gaga, take the stand before them, and that which I shall tell you, repeat to them. Anshar, your son, has sent me here, charging me to give voice to the dictate of his heart. He says that Tiamat, she who bore us, detests us. She has set up the assembly and is furious with rage. All the gods have rallied to her, even those whom you brought forth march at her side. They throng and march at the side of Tiamat. Enraged, they plow without seas night and day. They are set for combat, growling, raging. They have formed a council to prepare for the fight. Mother Hubur, she who fashions all things, has added matchless weapons, has borne monster serpents, sharp of tooth, and sparing of fan. With venom for blood, she has filled their bodies. Roaring dragons, she has clothed with terror, has crowned them with halos, making them like gods, so that he who beholds them is overcome by terror. Their bodies rear up, and none can withstand their attack. She has set up the viper, the dragon, and the monster Nahamu, the great lion, the mad dog, and the scorpion man, mighty lion demons, the dragonfly, the centaur, bearing weapons that spare not, fearless in battle. Her decrees are firm, none can resist them. After this fashion, eleven of this kind she has brought forth. From among the gods, her firstborn, who formed her assembly, she has elevated Kingu, has made him chief among them, the leader of the ranks, commander of the assembly, the raising of weapons for the encounter, advancing to combat, to direct the battle, to control the fight. These to his hands she entrusted, as she seated him in the council. I have cast a spell for you, exalting you in the assembly of the gods. To conquer all the gods, I have given you full power. Truly, you are supreme. You are my only consort. Your utterance shall prevail over all the Anunnaki. She has given him the tablet of destinies, fastened on his breast. As for you, your command shall be unchangeable. Your wound shall endure. As soon as Kingu was elevated, possessed of the rank of Anu, for the gods, her sons, they decreed the fate. Your one shall make the fire subside, shall humble the power and weapon, so potent in its sweep. I sent forth Anu, he could not face her. Nudimun was afraid and turned back. But Mardu came forth, the wisest of gods, your son. His heart having prompted him to set out to face Tiamat, he opened his mouth, saying unto me, If I indeed, as your avenger, am to vanquish Tiamat to save your lives, Set up the assembly, proclaim supreme my destiny. When jointly in Ubshukina you have sat down rejoicing, let my one instead of you determine the fates. Unalterable shall be what I bring into being. Neither recalled nor changed shall be the command of my lips. Now hasten here and promptly fix for him your decrees, that he may go forth to face your mighty foe. Gaga departed, proceeding on his way. Before Lamu and Lahamu, the gods, his fathers, he made options, kissing the ground at their feet. He bowed low as he took his place to address them. It was Anshan, your son, who had sent me here, charging me to give voice to the dictates of his heart. 
He says that he might see who bore us to test us. She has set up the assembly and is furious with rage. All the gods have rallied to her. Even those whom you brought forth march at her side. They are banded together and march at the side of Tiamat. Enraged, they plow without cease night and day. They are set for combat, growling, raging. They have formed a council to prepare for the fight. Mother Hubu, she who fashions all things, has added master's weapons, has borne monster serpents, sharp of tooth and spearing of fan. With venom for blood, she has filled their bodies. Roaring dragons, she has clothed with terror, has crowned them with halos, making them like gods, so that he who beholds them, terror overcomes him. Their bodies rear up, and none can withstand their attack. She has set up vipers, dragons, and the monster Lahamu, great lions, mad dogs, and scorpion men, mighty lion demons, dragonflies, and centaurs, bearing weapons that spare not, fearless in battle, firm on decrees, past withstanding on they. After this fashion, eleven of this kind she has brought forth. From among the gods, her firstborn, who formed her assembly, she has elevated Kingu, has made him chief among them, the leading of the ranks, command of the assembly, the raising of weapons from the encounter, advancing to combat, to direct the battle, to control the fight. These to his hands she has entrusted, as she seated him in the council. I have cast a spell for you, exalting you in the assembly of the gods. To conjure all the gods, I have given you full power. Truly, you are supreme. You are my only consort. Your utterance shall prevail over all the Anunnaki. She has given him the tablet of destinies fastened on his breast. As for you, your command shall be unchangeable. Your word shall endure. As soon as Kingu was elevated, possessed of the rank of Anu, from the gods, her sons, they decree the fate. Your word shall make the fire subside. To humble the power and weapon, so potent in its sweep. I sent forth Anu, he could not face her. Nudi Mood was afraid and turned back. But not Mardu came forth, the wisest of gods. He was sung, his heart having prompted him to set out to face Tiamat. He opened his mouth, saying unto me, If I indeed, as your avenger, am to vanquish Tiamat and save your lives, Set up, set up the assembly, proclaim supreme my destiny. When in Wu Shukina, jointly you sit down rejoicing. Let my one, instead of you, determine the fates. Unalterable shall be what I bring into being. Neither recalled nor changed shall be the command of my lips. Now hasten here and promptly fix for him your decrees, that he may go forth to face your mighty foe. When Lamu and Lahamu heard this, they cried out loud, all the Igigi wailed in distress. How strange that they should have made this decision. We cannot fathom the doings of Tiamat. They made ready to leave on their journey. All the great gods who decree the fates. They entered and performed Anshar, fairly Wubshikina. They kissed one another in their assembly. They held converse as they sat down to the banquet. They ate bread. They mixed wine. They wetted their drinking tubes with sweet intoxicant. As they drank the strong drink, their bodies swelled. They became very languid as their spirits rose. For Marduk, the avenger, they fixed their decrees. They erected for him a princely throne. Facing his fathers, he sat down, presiding. You are the most honored of the great gods. Your decree is unrivaled. Your command is Anu. You, Marduk, on the most honored of the great gods. Your decree is unrivaled. Your word is Anu. From this day, your pronouncements shall be unchangeable. To raise or bring low, these shall be in your hand. Your utterance shall be true. Your command shall be unimpeachable. No one among the gods shall transgress your bounds. Adornment being wanted for the siege of the gods, let the place of their shrines ever be in your place. O oh, Marduk, you are indeed our avenger. We have granted you kingship over the universe entire. When you sit in assembly, your word shall be supreme. Your weapons shall not fail, they shall smash your foes. O oh, Lord, spare the life of him who trusts you, but pour out the life of the God who sees evil. Having placed in their midst a garment, they address themselves to Marduk, their firstborn. 
May thy fate, O Lord, be supreme among the gods. Say but to wreck when to create, it shall be. Open your mouth, the garment shall vanish. Speak again, and the garment shall be made whole. At the word of his mouth, the garment vanished. He spoke again, and the garment was restored. When the gods, his fathers, saw the fruit of his word, joyfully they did homage, Marduk is king. They conferred on him scepter, throne, and vestment. They gave him matchless weapons that warned off the foes. Go and cut off the life of Tiamat. May the winds bear her blood to places undisclosed. Bell's destiny thus fixed, the gods, his fathers, caused him to go the way of success and attainment. He constructed a bow, marked it as his weapon, attached thereto the arrow, fixed its bow cord. He raised the mace, made his right hand grasp it. Bow and quiver he hung at his side. In front of him he set the lightning. With a blazing flame he filled his body. He then made a net to enfold Tiamat therein. The four winds he stationed, he stationed that nothing of her might escape. The south wind, the north wind, the east wind, the west wind. Close to his side he held the net, the gift of his father, Anu. He brought forth Umhuru, the evil wind, the whirlwind, the hurricane, the fourfold wind, the sevenfold wind, the cyclone, the matchless wind. Then he set forth the winds he had brought forth, the seven of them. To stir up the side of Tiamat, they rose up behind him. Then the Lord raised up the flood storm, his mighty weapon. He mounted the storm chariot, irresistible and terrifying. He harnessed and yoked it to a team of four, the killer, the relentless, the trampler, the swift. Their lips were parted, their teeth bore poison. They were tireless and skilled in destruction. On his right, he posted the smiter, fearsome in battle. On the left, the combat, which repels all the zealous. For a cloak, he was wrapped in an armor of terror. With his fearsome halo, his head was turbaned. The Lord went forth and followed his course. To warn the raging Tiamat, he set his face. In his lips, he held a spell. A plant to put out poison was grasped in his hand. Then they milled about him, the gods milled about him, the gods, his fathers, milled about him, the gods milled about him. The Lord approached to scan the inside of Tiamat, and of Kingu, her consort, the scheme to perceive. As he looks on, he loses his way, his will is distracted, and his doings are confused. And when the gods, his helpers, who marched at his side, saw the valiant hero, their vision became blurred. Tiamat emitted a cry without turning her neck, framing savage defiance in her lips. You are too important for the Lord of the Gods to rise up against you. Is it in their place that they have gathered, or in your place? Thereupon the Lord, having raised a flood storm, his mighty weapon, to enrage Tiamat, he sent word as follows. Why are you arisen, haughtily exalted? You have charged your own heart to stir up conflict. Sons reject their own fathers, while you, who have borne them, have forsworn love. You have appointed King Gu as your consort, conferring upon him the rank of Anu, now rightfully his. Against Anshan, king of the gods, you seek evil. Against the gods, my fathers, you have confirmed your wickedness. Though your forces are drawn up, your weapons grinded on, stand up that I and you might meet in single combat. When Tiamat heard this, she was like one possessed. She took leave of her senses. In fury, Tiamat cried out aloud. To the root, her legs shook both together. She recites a charm, keeps casting her spell, while the gods of battle sharpen their weapons. Then Tiamat and Marduk joined issue, wisest of gods. They strove in single combat, locked in battle. The Lord spread out his net to enfold her. The evil wind, which followed behind, he let loose in her face. When Tiamat opened her mouth to consume him, he drove in the evil wind, while as yet she had not shut her lips. As the terrible wind filled her belly, her body was distended, and her mouth was wide open. He released the arrow, it tore her belly, it cut through her insides, splitting the heart. Having thus subdued her, he extinguished her life. He cast down her carcass to stand upon it. 
After the Aslan Tiamat, the leader, her band was shattered, her troop broken up, and the guards, her helpers, were marched at her side, trembling with terror, turned their backs about, in order to save and preserve their lives. Tightly encircled, they could not escape. He made them captives, and he smashed their weapons. Thrown into the net, they found themselves ensnared. Placed in cells, they were filled with welding. Bearing his wrath, they were held imprisoned. And the eleven creatures which she had charged with awe, the whole band of demons that marched on her right, he cast into fetters, their hands he bound. For all their resistance, he trampled them underfoot. And Kingu, who had been made chief among them, he bound and accounted him to Uge. He took from him the Tablet of Destinies, now rightfully his, sealed them with a seal, and fastened them on his breast. When he had vanquished and subdued his adversaries, had the vainglorious foe, had wholly established Enchant's triumph over the foe, had achieved Nudimut's desire, valiant Marduk, strengthened his hold on the vanquished gods, and turned back to Tiamat, whom he had bound. The Lord trod on the legs of Tiamat. With his unsparing mace, he crushed her skull. When the arteries of her blood he had severed, the North went born into places undisclosed. On seeing this, his fathers were joyful and jubilant. They brought gifts of homage to him. Then the Lord paused to view her dead body, that he might divide the form and do honorable works. He split her like a shellfish into two parts. Half of her he set up as a covering for heaven, pulled down the barn and posted garns. He bade them to not allow her waters to escape. He crossed the heavens and surveyed the regions. He squared Absu's quarter, the abode of Nudi Mood. As the Lord measured the dimensions of Absu, the great abode, its likeness, he fixed as Asherah. The great abode, Asherah, which he made as the firmament. Anu, Enlil, and Ea he made occupy their places. He constructed stations from the great gods, fixing their astral likenesses as the stars of the zodiac. He determined the year, and into sections he divided it. He set up three constellations for each of the twelve months. After defining the date of the year by means of heavenly figures, he founded the station of the pole star to determine their bounds, that now my ear will go astray. Alongside it, he set up the stations of Enlil and Ea. Having opened up the gate on both sides, he strengthened the logs to the left and to the right. In her belly, he established the zenith, the moon he caused to shine, entrusting the night to him. He appointed him a creature of the night to signify the days, and marked off every month without cease by means of his crown. At the month's very start, rising over the land, you shall have luminous horns to signify six days, on the seventh day reaching a half crown. So shall the fifteen-day period be like one another, two halves for each month. When the sun overtakes you at the space of heaven, diminish your crown and retrogress in light. At the time of this appearance, approach the course of the sun, and on the thirtieth you shall again stand in opposition to the sun. I have appointed a sign, follow its path, approach and give judgment. After he had appointed the day to Shamash, and had established the precincts of night and day, taking the spittle of Tiamat, Mardu created, he formed the clouds and filled them with water, the raising of winds, the bringing of rain and cold, making the mist smoke piling up. These he planned himself, took into his own hand, putting her head into position, he formed them on the mountains, opening the deep, which was in flood. He caused to flow from her eyes the Tigris and the Euphrates. Stopping her nostrils, he left. He formed from her breasts the lofty mountains. Therein he drilled springs from the wells to carry off the water. Twisting her tail, he bound it to Durma, absolute at his foot. Her crotch, she was fashioned to the heavens. Thus he covered the heavens and established the earth. In the midst of Tiamat, he made flow. His night he completely let out, so he created heaven and earth, their bounds established. 
When he had designed his rules and fashioned his ordinances, he founded the shrines and handed them over to Ia. The tablet of destinies, which he had taken from Kingu, he carried. He brought it as the first gift of greeting. He gave it to Anu. The gods who had done battle and had been scattered, he led bound into the presence of his fathers. Now the eleven creatures which Tiamat had made, whose weapons he had shattered, which he had tied to his foot, of these he made statues and set them up at the gate of Apsu, saying, Let it be a token that this may never be forgotten. When the gods saw this, they were exceedingly glad. Lamu, Lahamu, and all of his fathers crossed over to him, and Enshar, the king, made manifest his greeting. Anu, Enlil, and Ia presented to him gifts. With a gift, Damkina, his mother, made him joyous. She sent offerings, his face brightened. To Uzmi, who brought her gift to a secret place, he entrusted the counselorship of Apsu and the stewardship of the shrines. Being assembled, all the Igigi bowed down, while every one of the Anunnaki kissed his feet. The assembly to do obeisance. They stood before him, bowed and said, He is the king. After the gods, his fathers, were she satiated with his charms. Ia and Demkina, they opened their mouths to speak to the great gods, the Agiki. Formerly Marduk was merely our beloved son, now he is your king, proclaim his title. A second speech they made, they all spoke. His name shall be Lugo de Merenkia, trust in him. When they had given the sovereignty to Marduk, they declared for him a formula of good fortune and success. Henceforth, you shall be the patron of our sanctuaries. Whatever you command, we will do. Marduk opened his mouth to speak, to say a word to the gods, his fathers. Above the Apsu, when you have resided, the counterpart of Asherah I have built over you. Below, I have haunted the ground for a building site. I will build a house. It will be my luxurious abode. I will found therein its temple. I will appoint its inner rooms. I will establish my sovereignty. When you come up from the absolute for assembly, you will spend the night in it. It is there to receive all of you. When you descend from heaven for assembly, you will spend the night in it. It is there to receive all of you. I will call its name Babylon, which means the houses of the great gods. I shall build it with the skill of craftsmen. When the gods, his fathers, heard the speech of his, they put the following question to Marduk, their firstborn. Over all that your hands have created, who will have your authority? Over the ground which your hands have created, who will have your power? Babylon, which you have given a fine name, therein establish our abode forever. Let them bring our daily ration. Our. Let no one usurp our tasks which we previously performed. Therein. Its labor. Marduk rejoiced when he heard this, and he answered those gods who had questioned him. He that slew Tiamat showed them light. He opened his mouth. His speech was noble. Then will be entrusted to you. The gods bowed down before him. They spoke to him. They said to Lugo de Merenkia, Formerly the Luan was merely our beloved son. Now he is our king, proclaim his title, he whose pure incantation gave us life. He is the lord of splendor, mace, and sceptre, Ia who knows the skill of all crafts. Let him prepare the plans, we will be the workers. When Marduk heard the words of the gods, his heart prompted him to fashion artful works. Opening his mouth, he addressed Ia to impart the plan he had conceived in his heart. I will take blood and fashion bone. I will establish a savage. Man shall be his name. Truly, savage man I will create. He shall be charged with the service of the gods, that they shall be at ease. The ways of the gods I will unfully alter. They are alike revealed. Into two groups they shall be divided. Ia answered him, speaking a word to him, giving him another plan for the relief of the gods. Let but one of their brothers be handed over. He alone shall perish, that mankind may be fashioned. Let the great gods be here in assembly. Let the guilty be handed over, that they may endure. Marduk summoned the great gods to assembly. 
Presiding graciously, he issued instructions. To his utterance, the gods pay heed. The king addressed the one to the Anunnaki. If your former statement was true, now declare the truth on oath by me. Who was it that contrived the uprising, and made him mad rebel, and join battle? Let him be handed over who contrived the uprising. His guilt I will make him bear. You shall dwell in peace. The Agigi, the great gods, replied to him, To Lugo Demerenkia, constant of the gods, their lord, it was Kingu who contrived the uprising, and made Tiamat rebel, and join battle. They bound him, holding him before Ia. They imposed on him his punishment, and severed his blood vessels. Out of his blood they fashioned mankind. He imposed on him the service, and let free the gods. After Ia, the wise, had created mankind, had imposed upon them the service of the gods, that work was beyond comprehension. As unfolded planned by Marduk, the Nudimud created, Marduk, the king of the gods, divided, all the great gods above and below. He assigned them to Anu to guard his instructions. Three hundred in the heavens he stationed as a guard. In like manner the ways of the earth he defined. In heaven and on earth, six hundred thus he settled. After he had ordered all the instructions, to the Anunnaki of heaven and earth had allotted their portions. The Anunnaki opened their mouths and said to Marduk, their lord, Now, O lord, you who have caused our deliverance, what shall be our homage to you? Let us build a shrine whose name shall be called Lo, a chamber for our nightly rest, let us repose in it. Let us build a throne, a recess for his abode. On the day that we arrive, we shall repose in it. When Marduk heard this, brightly glowed his features, like the day. Construct Babylon, whose building you have requested. Let its brickwork be fashioned. You shall name it the sanctuary. The Anunnaki applied the implement. For one whole year they molded bricks. When the second year arrived, they raised high the head of Esagila, according Absu. Having built a stage tower as high as Absu, they set up in it an abode for Marduk, Enlil, and Ea. In their presence he was seated in grandeur. To the base of Asherah its horns looked down. After they had achieved the building of Esagila, all the Anunnaki erected their shrines. The three hundred Igigi, out of them gathered, the Lord being on the lofty day which they had built as his abode. The gods, his fathers, at his banquet he seated. This is Babylon, the place that is your home. Make merry in his precincts. Occupy its broad places. The great gods took their seats. They set a festive drink, sat down to a banquet. After they had made merry within it, in Isagila, the splendid, had performed their rites. The norms had been fixed and all their importance. All the gods apportioned the stations of heaven and earth. The fifty great gods took their seats. The seven gods of destiny set up the three hundred in heaven. Enlil raised the bow, his weapon, and laid it before them. The gods, his fathers, saw the net he had made. When they beheld the bow, how skillful its shape, his fathers praised the work he had wrought. Raising it, Anu spoke up in the assembly of the gods. As he kissed the bow, this is my daughter. He named the names of the bow as follows. Longwood is the first, the second is accurate. Its still name is Bowstar, in heaven I have made it shine. He fixed its position with the gods its brothers. After Anu had decreed the fate of the bow, and had placed the lofty royal throne before the gods, Anu placed it in the assembly of the gods. When the great gods had assembled, they extolled the destiny of Marduk, they bowed down. They pronounced among themselves a curse, swearing by water and oil to place life in jeopardy. When they had granted him the exercise of kingship of the gods, when they had given him dominion over the gods of heaven and underworld, Enshan pronounced supreme his name, Asanluhi, saying, Let us do obeisance at the mention of his name. To his utterance let the gods give heed. Let his command be supreme above and below. Most exalted be the Son, our avenger. Let his sovereignty be surpassing, having no rival. May he shepherd the black-headed ones, his creatures. 
to the end of days, without forgetting, let them acclaim his ways. May he establish for his fathers the great food offerings. Their support they shall furnish, shall tend their sanctuaries. May he cause incense to be smelled, their spells. Make a likeness on earth of what he has wrought in heaven. May he wonder the black-headed to reveal him. May the subjects ever bear in mind to speak of their God. And may they at his word pay heed to the goddess. May food offerings be born for their gods and goddesses. Without fail, let them support their gods. Their lands, let them improve, build their shrines. Let the black-headed wait on their gods. As for us, by however many names we pronounce, he is our God. Let us then proclaim his fifty names. He whose ways are glorious, whose deeds are likewise. Marduk, as Anu, his father, caught him from his birth. Who provides grazing and drinking places, enriches their stalls. Who with the flushed worm, his weapon, vanquished the detractors. And who the gods, his fathers, rescued from distress. Truly, the son of the sun, most radiant of gods, is he. In his brilliant light may they walk forever. On the people he brought forth, endowed with life. The service of the gods he imposed, that these may have ease. Creation, destruction, deliverance, grace, shall be by his command. They shall look up to him. Maruka truly is the god, creator of all, who gladdens the heart of the Anunnaki, appeases the Yigiki. Merutuku truly is the refuge of his land, city, and people. Unto him shall the people give praise forever. Bereshakushu stood up and took hold of his reins. Wide is his heart, warm his sympathy. Lugo Demerenkia is his name, which we proclaimed in our assembly. His commands we have exalted above the gods, his fathers. Truly, he is lord of all the gods of heaven and underworld. The king at whose discipline the gods above and below are in mourning. Neri Lugo Demerenkia is the name of him, whom we have called the monitor of the gods, who in heaven and on earth found for us retreats in trouble and who are lost stations to the Gigi and Anunnaki. At his name, the gods shall tremble and quake in retreat. Asarulugdu is that name of his, which Anu, his father, proclaimed for him. He is truly the light of the gods, the mighty leader, who, as the protecting deities of God and land, in fierce single combat, saved our retreats in distress. Asaruludu, secondly, they have named Nemtilaku, the God who maintains life, who restores the lost gods as though his own creation, the Lord who revives the dead gods by his pure incantation, who destroys the wayward foes, let us praise his prowess. Esaruludu, whose name was sternly called Namru, the shining God who illuminates our ways. Three each of his names have Anshar, Lamu, and Lahamu proclaimed. Unto the gods, their sons, they did utter them. We have proclaimed three each of his names. Like us do you utter his names. Joyfully the gods heeded their command, as in Rupshukina they exchanged counsels. Of the heroic son, our avenger, of our supporter we will exalt the name. They sat down in their assembly to fashion destinies, all of them uttering his names in the sanctuary. Asaru, bestower of cultivation, who established water levels, Creator of grain and herbs, who causes vegetation to sprout. Esarudim, who is honored in the place of council, who excels in council, to whom the gods hope, now being possessed of fear. Esarudim Nuna, the gracious, light of the father, his begetter, who directs the decrees of Anu, Enlil, Ia, and Nenigiku. He is their provider who assigns their portions, whose horn cap is plenty, multiplying. Tutu is he who created them anew. Let him purify their shrines, that they may have ease. Let him devise the spell that the gods may be at rest. Should they rise in anger, let them turn back. Truly, he is supreme in the assembly of the gods. No one among the gods is his equal. Tutu is Zirukina, life of the host of the gods, who established from the gods the holy heavens, who keeps a hold on their ways, determines their courses, he shall not be forgotten by the beclouded. Let them remember his deeds. Tutu they sternly call Jiku, who brings purification. 
God of the favoring breeze, the Lord of hearing and mercy, who produces riches and treasures, establishes abundance, who has turned all our wants to plenty, whose favoring breeze we felt in strong distress. Let them speak, let them exalt, let them sing his praises. Two, two, fourthly, let the people magnify Asagaku, the Lord of the Holy Charm, who revives the dead, who had mercy on the vanquished gods, who removed the yoke imposed on the gods, his enemies, and who, to redeem them, created mankind, the merciful, in whose power it lies to grant life. May his deeds endure, not to be forgotten, in the mouth of the black-headed, whom his hands have created. Tutu, fifthly, is Tuku, whose holy spell their mouths shall murmur, who, with his holy charm, has uprooted all the evil ones. Shazu, who knows the heart of the gods, who examines the inside, from whom the evildoer cannot escape, who sets up the assembly of the gods, gladdens their hearts, who subdues the insubmissive, their widespread protection, who directs justice, roots out crooked talk, who wrong and right in his place keeps apart. Shazu, may they, secondly, exalt as Jishi, who silences the insurgent, who banishes consternation from the body of the gods, his fathers. Shazu is, thirdly, Surim, who with a weapon roots out all enemies, who frustrates their plans, scatters them to the winds, who blots out all the wicked ones who tremble before him. Let the gods exalt in assembly. Shazu is, fourthly, Shugurim, who ensures a hearing for the gods, his fathers, creator of the gods, his fathers, who roots out their enemies, destroys their progeny, who frustrates their doings, leaving nothing of them. May his name be evoked and spoken in the land. Shazu, fifthly, they shall praise as Jarim, the Lord of the living, who destroys all adversaries, all the disobedient, pursues the evil, who all the fugitive gods brought home to their shrines. May his name endure. To Shazu, moreover, they shall, sixthly, render all honor as Jakurim, who all the foes destroyed as though in battle. And Bilulu, the one who makes them flourish, is he, the mighty one who named them, who instituted roast offerings, who ever regulates for the land the grazing and watering places, who opened the wells, apportioning waters of abundance. On Bilulu, secondly, they shall glorify as a Padum, the Lord who sprinkles the field, irrigator of heaven and earth, who establishes seed rows, who forms fine plowland in the steppe, dam and ditch regulates, who delimits the furrow. On Bilulu, thirdly, they shall praise as On Bilulu Guga, the irrigator of the plantations of the gods, Lord of abundance, opulence, and of ample crops who provides wealth, enriches all dwellings, who furnishes millet, causes barley to appear. Ambilulu is Higa, who heaps up abundance for the people's consumption, who causes rich rains over the whole earth, provides vegetation, who causes rich rains over the wide earth, provides vegetation. Sunsu, who heaped up a mountain over her, Tiamat, who the corpse of Tiamat carried off with his weapon, who directs the land, the faithful shepherd, whose hair is a green field, his horn caps four rows, who the wide-spreading sea vaults in his wrath, crossing her like a bridge at the place of single combat. Sursu, secondly, they named Mala, and so forth. Tiamat is his vessel, and he the rider. Gil, who stores up grain heaps, massive mounds, who brings forth barley and millet, furnishes the seed of the land, Gilma, who makes lasting the lofty abode of the gods, creator of security. The hoop that holds the barrel together, who presents good things. A Gilma, the exalted one, who tears off the crown from the wrong position, who creates the clouds above the waters, makes enduring aloft. Julum, who designates the field from the gods, allows the creation, who grants portions and food offerings, tends the shrines. Mumu, creator of heaven and earth, who directs. The God who sanctifies heaven and earth is, secondly, Zuluma, whom no other among the gods can match in strength. Gishnu Munab, creator of all people, who made the world regions, destroyer of the gods of Tiamat, who made men out of their substance. Lugo Dubar, the king who frustrated the work of Tiamat, rooted out her weapons, 
whose foundation is form in front and in the rear. Pagalgrina, the foremost of all the Luans, whose strength is outstanding, who is preeminent in the royal abode, most exalted of the gods. Lugoderma, the king of the band of the gods, the Luan of rulers, who is preeminent in the abode of the gods, most exalted of the gods. Aranuna, counselor of Ea, creator of the gods, his fathers, whose princely ways no god whatever can equal. Dumuduku, whose pure dwelling is renewed in Duku. Dumuduku, without whom Lugo Kuduga makes no decision. Lugolana, the king whose strength is outstanding among the gods. The Luan, strength of Anu, who became supreme at the call of Anshua. Lugo Luga, who carried off all of them amidst the struggle, who all wisdom encompasses, broad in perception. The Kingu, who carried off Kingu in the thick of battle who conveys guidance from all, establishes rulership, Kinma, who directs all the gods, the giver of counsel, at whose name the gods quake in fear, as at the storm. As a Jukar shall sit aloft in the house of prayer, may the gods bring them presents before him, that from him they may receive their assignments. None can without him create unfair works. Four black-headed ones are among his creatures, Aside from him, no god knows the answer as to their days. Gabriel, who maintains the sharp point of the weapon, who creates unfair works in the battle with Tiamat, who has broad wisdom, is accomplished in insight, whose mind is so vast that the gods, all of them, cannot fathom it. Adu be his name, the whole sky may he cover, may his beneficent roar ever hover over the earth. May he, as Mumu, diminish the clouds, Below, may he furnish sustenance for the people. Ashiru, who, as is his name, guided the gods of destiny. All of the people are truly in his charge. Nibiru shall hold the crossings of heaven and earth, so that the gods cannot cross above and below. They must wait upon him. Nibiru is the star which in the skies is brilliant. May he hold the beginning and the future. May they pay homage unto him, saying, He who forced his way through the midst of Tiamat without resting, let Nibiru be his name, who controls its midst. May they uphold the corners of the stars of heaven. May he shepherd all the gods like sheep. May he vanquish Tiamat. May her life be straight and short. Into the future of mankind, when days have grown old. May she receive without cease, and stay that way forever. Because he created the spaces and fashioned the firm ground. Father Enlil called his name, Lord of the Lands. When all the names which Yigigi proclaimed, Ea had heard, his spirit rejoiced. Thus, he whose name his fathers have glorified, he is indeed even as I, his name shall be Ea. All my combined rights he shall administer, all my instructions he shall carry out. With the title of fifty, the great gods, proclaimed him whose name from fifty, and made his way supreme. Let them be kept in mind, and let the leader explain them. Let the wise and the knowing discuss them together. Let the father recite them and impart to his son. Let the ears of shepherd and herdsman be open. Let him rejoice in Marduk, the Enlil of the gods, that his lands may be fertile and that he may prosper. Firm in his wonder, his command unalterable. The utterance of his mouth no god shall change. When he looks, he does not turn away his neck. When he is angry, no god can withstand his wrath. His heart is unfathomable, his purpose is broad. Sinner and transgressor may come before him. He rolled down and thereby preserved it from the future. The dwelling of Marduk which the gods, the Igigi, had made. Let them speak. The Song of Marduk Who vanquished Tiamat and achieved the kingship.